one final question. Yes. The dumbing down of our education system. When you dumb down education, what do you expect to get out of it? You expect to get a very, very dumb set of young people that will not be inspired to drive and achieve the same kind of things that you and I in the 70s, 80s, and 90s aspired to do and went all the way out, like you're saying. I, agree with I you. was on Incredibly. train several times. Now, Incredibly. I'd like you to yes. just respond to that. Dumbing down of our education, what do you think it could have done no to our young people? No person will run away from the validity of the propositions you have made. No person. As a matter of fact, to paint the poverty of the situation more, more, more carefully is to remind you about the few incidences that have happened in our respective universities. One, the university that I attended, the University of Nigeria, just woke up one day and heard that a supervising minister of education had sacked and removed the, the, the pro-chancellor. Pro the, the, the universities are not hanging in the air. They are creations of law. In the University of Nigeria, art as applicable to virtually all the federal universities. You can't do that. It is only the visitor, who is the president, that can suspend, that can remove a process. Of so now, relating now, that yes, to I'm the relating it. down. Yes, I'm yes. relating it to say that by far more than the policy of the government in relation to education, you still have transgressions that depict the excesses of managers of education in such a way that we don't even understand whether they have clear interest in improving education. And that was just coming on the heels of the protracted ASU strike that took about six months, if I'm not mistaken. So I agree with you perfectly. And to say but that- all that having been okay. said, I want to make note here that the advisory committee took cognizance of the realities of Nigeria and still made provisions for there to be more than enough youths. Which is mm -hmm. what number? What is more than enough? Now, every state, every, uh, every state delegation, you have to have a youth. That was what we recommended. Every, a number of youths, we gave certain numbers. NANS, uh, we identified different organizations. And we said this number, this number, this number. But then we made it mandatory for different interest groups to include youths and women in their list. Do you notice that even women were not included in certain state governments' lists? So it is not just a problem of the convening body. It's a problem also of the participatory interest groups, whether government or civil society. People are still not prepared to give up these strongholds they have on whether power or symbols of power. It is therefore up to the different groups like women, youths, and so on, to make themselves become more relevant. In saying more relevant, I'm not asking anybody to call for an Arab Spring, but <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can make yourself so visible and make yourself virtually <laughs> indispensable. indispensable that whether we like it or not, you'll be accommodated. You know, Lyndon Johnson, one of the most attitude politicians I know, I've studied, said it's better to have them out inside, pissing, sorry, out than outside, peacing in. So everybody who wants peace and wants, I mean, the other peace, well, anyway, everybody who wants it tries to accommodate those elements that would in any way create a rocking of the boat when they are trying to chart a course. It is because we don't have enough people who are really concerned about the common good there's too much concern, especially amongst youth groups, about self-aggrandizement. And nobody is going to pander to that. People respond to things based on the value, the capacity of what you can do, either to improve the situation or to be a nuisance to the situation. 
And I think our youths and a lot of other interest groups have not helped themselves, but they are well represented in the conference. 